continued under Freemasonry. The French historian Henry Martin reports, quote, Vicent, proposed as the end of Illuminism, the abolition of property, social authority, nationality, and the return of the human race to the happy state in which it formed only a single family without artificial needs, without useless sciences, every father being priest and magistrate. President George Washington himself was convinced that the Illuminati existed after 1785, when it was outlawed in Bavaria. He corresponded with the Reverend named G. W. Snyder, voicing his concerns about the Illuminati. This was written 13 years after the Illuminati was outlawed in Bavaria. George Washington states, quote, I have heard much of the nefarious and dangerous plans and doctrines of the Illuminati. It was not my intention to doubt that the doctrines of the Illuminati and the principles of Jacobinism had not spread in the United States. On the contrary, no one is more truly satisfied of this fact than I am. The idea that I meant to convey was that I did not believe that the lodges of Freemasons in this country had, as societies, endeavored to propagate the diabolical tenets of the first or the pernicious principles of the latter, if they are susceptible of separation, that individuals of them may have done it, or that the founder or instrument employed to found the democratic societies in the United States may have had these objects and actually had the separation of people from their government in view is too evident to be questioned. From President Washington, we learned that he believed the Illuminati was nefarious and dangerous. He had little doubt about the Illuminati spreading to America by 1798. He was truly satisfied, or in other words, convinced of this fact. He thought it was too early for whole Masonic lodges to be striving for Illuminati objectives, but he did believe individuals within American lodges were certainly doing so. He believed the founder or instrument used to found the democratic societies in the USA may have had Illuminati objectives in mind and that they had the separation of the people from their government in view. According to Washington, these things are too evident to be questioned. That same year, the president of Yale University, Timothy Dwight IV, spoke out against the Illuminati. Quote, The great and good ends proposed by the Illuminati as the ultimate objects of their union are the overthrow of religion, government, and human society, civil and domestic. Joseph Willard, the president of Harvard University, said in a speech in New Hampshire, quote, There is sufficient evidence that a number of societies of the Illuminati have been established in this land of gospel light and civil liberty, which were first organized from the Grand Society in France. They are doubtless secretly striving to undermine all our ancient institutions, civil and sacred. These societies are closely leagued with those of the same order in Europe. They have all the same objects in view. The enemies of all order are seeking our ruin. Should infidelity generally prevail, our independence would fall, of course. Our Republican government would be annihilated. Speaking on this new Freemasonry that was infiltrated by Illuminati elitist doctrines, John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, remarked, quote, I do conscientiously and sincerely believe that the order of Freemasonry, if not the greatest, is one of the greatest moral and political evils because this Illuminati doctrine of globalization and societal reform was fused into Freemasonry, later prominent Masons started voicing their anticipation of a new world order, one world system. Freemasonry is just one of many uh, ways to get people into the occult. It's, it's, but, but even more than that, it's um, able to get them into a really sort of packaged way to produce people that can be used in a more mechanical way in the system. That is, that they can be uh, put into places of power to turn a lot of the gears and things like that. Let me demonstrate that the high levels of Freemasonry and Theosophy are now simultaneously striving for a new world order, one world religion. Their dogma is that for the upcoming age of Aquarius, humanity needs to unite into a one world government or new world order. The former Supreme Grand Master of the Fraternity of the Rosy Cross or FRC, Reuben Swineborn Clymer, wrote in his work Ancient Mystic Oriental Freemasonry, quote, 
mystic masonry is not only the key to the religion taught to all men in all ages from the very beginning of conscious life up to the present, but it holds the keys to these religious and is, in fact, the very repository of religion itself. It has for its object the uniting of mankind into a universal brotherhood. The 19th and 20th century Freemason and Rosicrucian Arthur Edward Waite admitted that secret societies he was involved with control political, scientific, and religious affairs. Waite believed that these societies always existed in every nation and are connected to modern societies, which I believe can be disputed. But nonetheless, he stated the following in his work, The Real History of the Rosicrucians, quote, Beneath the broad tide of human history, there flow the stealthy undercurrents of the secret societies, which frequently determine in the depths the changes that take place upon the surface. These societies have existed in all ages and among all nations, and tradition has invariably ascribed to them the possession of important knowledge in the religious, scientific, or political order according to the various character of their pretensions." Unquote. The official Freemasonic Scottish Rite magazine entitled The New Age Magazine admits that it is for a new world order, new world religion, and new age. Quote, great God our King has chosen the great American public schools to pave the way for the new race, the new religion, and the new civilization that is taking place in America. Any mother, father, or guardian who is responsible for the taking away of the freedom of mind, freedom of will, or freedom of spirit is the lowest criminal on earth because they take away from that child the God-given right to become part of God's great plan in America for the dawn of the new age of the world. 33rd degree Freemason Manley Palmer Hall advocated world government, quote, The new Atlantis sets forth an ideal government of the earth. It foretells that day when in the midst of men there shall rise up a vast institution composed of the philosophic elect an order of illumined men band together for the purpose of investigating the laws of life and the mysteries of the universe. The age of boundaries is closing and we are approaching a nobler era when nations shall be no more, when the lines of race and caste shall be wiped out, when the whole earth shall be under one order, one government, one administrative body." Unquote. Alice Bailey, the prominent theosophist, stated, quote, The new era is coming, the new ideals, the new civilization, the new modes of life, of education, of religious presentation, and of government are slowly precipitating and nothing can stop them. N. Sri Ram, a prominent theosophist and New World Order advocate, stated, quote, Let us first consider the restoration of the mysteries. It is well known among members of the Comasonic movement that its work has been faithfully continued up to the present and that its number of lodges has steadily increased. I imagine that at such an auspicious time when the inner and outer worlds will have come much nearer together some of the great leaders of the hierarchy might take part in the outer work of reconstruction and will then become the recognized leaders of the new world government." Unquote. Now, this was written by Manly P. Hall. Manly P. Hall was both a grand master within Freemasonry and he was a grand master in the Illuminati. And he says, All of sincere heart will find consolation in the conviction that powers beyond and above human corruption continue to administer the destiny of the globe. It would be a mistake to confuse the governing bodies with the various sects which pretend to authority but give no indication or proof that they can manage efficiently even their own affairs. Now Manly P. Hall knows who he's referring to here because he's part of that secret body. But of course he speaks positively of it. The Zeitgeist films and movement have more ties to Theosophy and Freemasonry. At just two minutes into the second Zeitgeist film, Zeitgeist Addendum, a lecture of a man by the name of Jiddu Krishnamurti is played. Jiddu spent much of his childhood in southern India. Jiddu's father was a member of the Theosophical Society in southern India. When Jiddu was a boy, he was discovered by the Theosophist C. W. Ledbetter. Ledbetter was a man who was brought up on charges of immoral behavior with young boys, yet he still had a close relationship 
with the president of Theosophy, Annie Besant. Ledbetter and Besant would adopt Jiddu and take him to England. They raised him and brainwashed him into the Theosophic esoteric teachings. They were convinced that he was their return of the Christ and that he would lead humanity into the age of Aquarius as the world teacher for the new age. Jiddu thought he was the Christ for many years due to being brainwashed and he would give lectures speaking with authority on esoteric and occult matters. However, Jiddu became reluctant and after many years decided not to be the Christ of Theosophy. He was a false Christ and he later departed from Theosophy. He did retain connection with Theosophists and devoted the later part of his life to giving lectures on New Age spirituality. He authored many books on the subject as well. The fact that Zeitgeist would include this man in their film, knowing his deep connection with Theosophy, should demonstrate to everyone the New Age esoteric nature of the Zeitgeist films and movement.